It's a beautiful day and sunny today. It's cooled down to around 70 degrees. First thing I want to do is fix my tether that's got the bad pin in it, remember? I have here an old grade 8 bolt that I can use the shank off of to make a new pin. Now I have a blank which is the same length and diameter as the old pin that's really worn. And I have to figure out how to make this groove here. And here we go. It certainly isn't perfect. It's a farmer fix. Slide that in. And there we go. The spring pin runs through here. This is the cross pin here. Yes, it's got some play in it from wear in the bore, but for as much as I use it, I think it'll be okay. Seems to be good now. That's that, I guess. The true test will be when we bring it out into the field and try it when it's time to Ted Hay. You know, I think it's awful gratifying when you can fix something without having to run out and buy stuff or have to climb in the truck and go to town. It just feels good. Hillary and I have to bring out a batch of chicks this afternoon, broiler chicks, and the grass has gotten too tall out there, which happens every year about this time. Too early to take hay, but the grass is too tall. So I cut a patch in front of the boxes and got to get the hay bine out to do that. Of course, getting out the hay bine isn't as easy as just getting out the hay bine. I got to get it out, I got to check it over, I got to grease it, just to do a little bit of mowing. But hay season's coming anyway, so it's a good thing done. It's all greased up, chains oiled. Let's start her up and see if anything goes kerflooey. could cut all this but rain is in the forecast for a good part of this week so I gotta wait This grass has gotten too tall for the pasture boxes for the broiler chickens and it's way too tall to bring out little chicks on so I'm just going to mow in front here to give us a clear space to pull the boxes ahead for another week or so. Well let's see how she does. Me want to start cutting hay. I just cleared out this little patch here. If Hillary and I have the time, we'll scoop some up and feed it to the bulls. Still love it. Meanwhile, of course, these guys are not happy. We're going to take care of that this afternoon, though. Alright, I got one for you. Why did the cross-eyed T 
teacher get fired? Because he couldn't control his pupils. Hillary's working on cleaning up the drinkers for the chicks and I'm gonna go get the tractor and pull the boxes out into the field where they're supposed to go. And the super sees the official chicken hauling tractor for the summer. This is about the best all around tractor that I have. Easy to get on, easy to start up. Up and down hitch for hooking up trailers. It's really handy. Howdy bulls. They've been pretty peaceful in there. They ain't been complaining much at all. We gotta pull these boxes out that are in the tall grass here. Last two chicken boxes to run in the field. To make a total of six. Pull these out, I just tie a rope around them on the front and lift up the hitch and pull them out. Take these rocks off that we used to weight it down for the winter so it doesn't blow away. And then put the dolly under the other end. And away we go, hopefully. I guess now we're ready to bring the chicks out. We got all six boxes here. We're gonna load up these two with three week old Cornish cross broiler chicks. These are the guys that are going. Fatties. Right, Hillary? Yeah. <laughs> all right, fatties. This is our plunger here. You pull it back and it brings the chicks to the back of the trailer. Chickens, when we got them in there at butcher time, and then we just pick them right up without chasing them out around. You don't get jokes lately, huh? No, I haven't. She's busy counting. I haven't heard any good jokes lately. Just bad ones. In fact, so bad they're good. That's what I think anyway. job. Now we got to go take care of those belly aching cattle and they've got good reason to belly ache and I'll show it to you. You call it an expiration date but I call it a spoiler alert. <laughs> They're always bad. 
Here come the cows. Here's what's happened on this field, and I keep saying grazing conditions can change in a day in the spring. When they grazed that first paddock, they grazed it down to my liking. They're getting into this stuff, and in just a week, the stalks have really come on on the orchard grass especially. They won't graze them. They're belly aching, and they haven't grazed this to my liking. It is a freaking mess. I don't like it. So we're going to pull them off of this field, leave this to make hay, and put them on younger forage down in the lower field that they'll clean up better. So in the end, I'll have more hay. The cattle have better forage, and I'm not grazing them on over mature stuff. That's one of the big problems I have with some of the current schools of grazing that are grazing cattle on over mature forage. When it gets a little bit over mature, make it into hay. Stop grazing it. They're just going to waste a lot of it, and they're better off eating forage that's in peak um, growth mode. So we got to go down through here and pull up the back fence posts to build the fence on the lower field. Oh, the cows had their way with this one. Uh-oh, somebody's following me. Oh, no. Oh, you guys, you wreck everything. You bent all the posts. Good thing they bend back. I'm being stalked. <laughs> yeah. I know. I know. <laughs> Gonna bring them into this laneway here, close the gate, and then we can take down the front fence. Come on, cows. Come on, you guys. I know. Come on, guys. Come on, cows. There you go. All right, you guys, why don't I go open this gate? All right, guys. You guys are not sure where you're going, do you? Here we go. Boy, it's getting dry here. We closed this gate here behind them, and they're grazing in the laneway. We'll take down the front fence, and then we can move everything down to the other field. See, look at this mess they made. They left some high because it's got a stalk here and they tromped a whole bunch of it down. Now, if this were made into hay, they would eat it. And that's what I'm going to do. Here's a piece that they haven't grazed. And see all the orchard grass is going to seed. And it's up past my knees now. It's ready to cut. We just got to wait for a weather window. I'm not putting the cows on this. Putting them on over mature forage is just a waste. Beep, 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 beep. Beep, beep. Yeah, you throw a leg a lot, don't you? I don't like that. Watch out, guys. Oh. Watch out. Watch out. Don't talk with food in your mouth. Watch out. So this was the first field that we had second round grazing in. We grazed this in the early spring. This was the second grazing. It's gotten too far ahead of us, like I said, saving the rest to make hay. This next field is a five acre piece. We grazed this again in early spring. It's been resting now for about three weeks and it's time to second graze it. The orchard grass in this field is starting to head out too, but the undergrowth isn't nearly as dense, so we're going to clamp down the paddocks on this one and get them to clip the heads more. And of course, we won't be able to set up the fence fast enough for these guys. They're so impatient. Especially you, Patty. These three guys went under the fence, those naughty yearlings. They're supposed to know better than that at this age. What do you want? What do you want? What do you want? Uh-huh, okay. Oh, those poor cows are gonna faint. They're starving. Here we go. You gotta be 
be invited, huh? Come on, cows! Come on, cows! Here we go! Yeah, new grass. New grass, guys. Oh. You'd think you guys hadn't eaten in a week. Here's that nice heifer. She is nice. Let's get that clover first. They will too. If I was to take them off this piece too early, they would have the clover down to the ground and still have all these seed heads poking up. And the idea now is to get them to eat these seed heads because the grass will regrow faster if those seed heads are taken off and I'll get more volume in grass throughout the rest of the season if I can get them to clip it down. That's why we're tightening up our paddocks here. That's always the struggle with grazing because clover is your marker of when you want to move your cattle. But when you get into these kind of situations, you really want to have them take the bulk of the seed heads down so that the rest of the grass will grow. Now, we're not just growing clover here. We've got Timothy and orchard grass and perennial rye grass and alfalfa in here too. So I need to ignore that clover marker for a little while and get them to clip this down so that I'll have better yield all the rest of the summer. Turkey vulture, big bird. It sure is a nice day. Hey, what insect has high cholesterol? A butterfly. <laughs> really is a shame that we spend so much time, energy, money, and fuel mowing hundreds and thousands and who knows how many acres of lawn in the U.S. when nature's lawnmowers are right here and you can grow good meat and mow the lawn at the same time. I don't know. I guess I'm just a dreamer. Well, these guys are all settled, so I'm going to head back up and do the afternoon chores, and we'll take a look at Red's piglets. You know, in our climate, it takes a half acre of grass to graze a Dexter cow. That's all you need. Can you imagine how many people have lawns that are at least a half acre? They could be growing all their own beef instead of mowing their lawn. I'm serious about that. We do some screwy things in this country. Red, how are you? Yeah. Look at those little guys. I'll bring you in to see them. They're doing good. Still 11. It was a little bit chilly last night. Got down into the high 40s, but... They were all snuggled up against mom this morning when I came out. They're starting to talk a little bit more. Oh! <laughs> no, nope, store's closed. Hey, Red. How are you? You've had a tough couple days, haven't you? Yeah. Boy, it's been a beautiful day. These are the days where if I go to bed with sore muscles, I know I did a good day's work. I hope you have a great day, and I'll see you next time.